happy little games. Hey everybody, just a quick reminder that if you enjoy this content or any of my videos, be sure and leave a like. It helps support the channel and allows my videos to move it on up with YouTube's algorithm. Thanks again. In the early 1980s, as arcades were experiencing what is now referred to as its golden age, movie theaters were also experiencing a similar trend with the summer blockbuster. The must-see movie of the summer trend started with 1975's Jaws and continued to produce franchises such as Star Wars, Star Trek, and Indiana Jones. Around this time, the rise of the anti-hero would also come to pass with characters such as John Rambo and Colonel James Braddock, usually involving the rescue of POWs. This premise proved to be ripe for video game adaptations and the company of SNK would put their best feet forward and produce the game we are talking about today, POW or Prisoners of War. This classic game took the gritty, realistic wartime action and put it right into the palm of your hands. This involves you making your way through a number of stages, punching and kicking anything and everything that moves. What other war-inspired games did SNK release? So get your trigger finger ready and let's get to the choppa. This is the history of POW Prisoners of War. A lot of times, the mere mention of three little initials will give retro gamers a warm, fuzzy feeling in their belly and a Cheshire grin that creeps across their face as if they just unleashed an SBD in an elevator full of people. Those three initials are SNK. SNK gives those retro gamers that good old nostalgia feeling not only for the number of classic arcade titles, but also the ultimate retro gaming console, the Neo Geo. This was usually unattainable by most unless you happen to pick it up by utilizing the five finger discount. The company of SNK or Shin Nihon Kikaku was founded in 1973 in Japan. The company released a number of arcade and console releases including the aforementioned Neo Geo. They also introduced successful franchises such as Fatal Fury, Art of Fighting, and The King of Fighters. In the mid-1980s, thanks to the success of Rambo, SNK got their feet wet with a number of wartime themed games. This started with Tank, Akari Warriors, and Guerrilla War, among others. One thing that these games all had in common was that they used an overhead behind the shoulder viewpoint which scrolled vertically as you made your way through the various levels. The developers wanted to try a more fast paced brawler with weapons and faster gameplay when designing their new game. They were inspired by a few different successful arcade games with the first one being Double Dragon and the second one being the side-scrolling Cold War title Russian Attack. The fast-paced action of Russian Attack was key, but the developers wanted to give the player more freedom of movement similar to Double Dragon. The main character apparently did not skip leg day as your jumping kick will send the enemies flying across the screen similar to the game Kung Fu Master. Apparently this title was also inspired by Metal Gear Solid as the main character in this game as well as Tank was codenamed Snake. Prisoners of War was released by SNK into the arcades in 1988. As far as the story goes, the arcade game has the bare minimum with you starting the game being trapped inside of a POW camp and lighting an explosive to set yourself free. You have to make it through all four levels rescuing the various POWs in the process. The NES version expands upon this a bit more but more on that later. This is a one or two player simultaneous brawler that sees you take control of Snake as you start out with nothing but your bare knuckles and your feet, which have obviously been registered as lethal weapons. FYI, 
The second player is codenamed Bart, who is the name of the character in the NES version. You have three buttons at your disposal, a dedicated button for punching, one for kicking, and one for jumping. You have the ability to perform a jump kick as well as a couple of other different moves. There is a headbutt which is performed by hitting a punch and kick at the same time, and also a back fist which hits enemies that are behind you by pressing punch and jump simultaneously. You need to master these moves because the enemies are absolutely relentless in their pursuit to lock you back in your cage and feed you nothing but gruel. Since this is a belt scroller similar to Double Dragon, the enemies will swarm at you not only from the left and the right, but also from the top and the bottom. This is showcased by the smooth animation and character presentation. Your character is animated from the left and the right, but also up and down, giving the entire level more depth and immersion. This was one of the first arcade games to allow you to pick up and use firearms. This is straight out of a typical 80s action flick where the main character is surrounded, but luckily enough, he gets his hands on a gun and blows those dastardly devils away, giving him a few more seconds to figure out his next move. You have a couple of different weapons you can pick up, one of which is a knife, which is always good for a little slice and dice action. You can also choose to either throw the knife or preserve it and just use your lethal kicks. The other one is the dreaded machine gun, but with that comes limited ammunition. Again, to preserve the ammunition, you can use it as a weapon and beat the crap out of the enemies instead, sending them to meet their maker. There are only a few different enemy sprites in the game, but they come at you with such ferocity that you tend not to notice. There are times you'll be ganged up on by five enemies, so you really need to be on your toes. The enemies will come at you with knives and guns, but they'll also throw grenades as well. They will come at you riding on motorcycles in which you not only have to knock them off, but also jump out of the way, otherwise you'll take serious damage. Again, straight out of an action flick and pretty cool to see, especially back in 1988. Enemies are crawling out of the woodwork and will also drop in from helicopters in an attempt to take you out. Occasionally, you'll have to climb ladders and jump long distances which helps break up the monotony of the levels. As I mentioned, the graphics and animation in particular are really well done, from the explosions to how smoothly Snake and his enemies move around. The music is catchy and the sound effects have a nice weight to them. There are only four levels in the game, but they are extremely long and action-packed. In between each level are brief cutscenes that explain the story just a bit. These actually give off an Operation Wolf style vibe. To complement the excellent graphics and animation, the soundtrack goes hand in hand with the high octane action. It was composed by SNK regulars Yoko Osaka and Toshikazu Tanaka. There are four levels or missions you have to complete, and they are Escape from the Prison Camp. Industrial Area <laughs> Gorilla Attack
and the final mission, which is the destruction of the communications headquarters. Before you reach the final level, you radio in a chopper and make your way to the clearing. If you can dispatch all the enemies, you board the chopper and the game is over. When it came time for SNK to convert their powerful arcade titles onto the humble 8-bit NES, sacrifices would always have to be made. A lot of times extra content would be included to make up for the short length of the arcade titles such as the extra levels found in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles the arcade game for the NES. Other games became radically different such as Bionic Commando and Strider and in some ways, the same thing happened with the NES version of Prisoners of War. For starters, it's only a single player affair and rather than have you control Snake, you now take control of Bart. To make up for the lack of a two player mode, you are given Flicker. Lots and lots of Flicker, even though you're only limited to three enemies on screen at once. The storyline has also been fleshed out in which you have to infiltrate the Government of Offensive Network or GOON which is an organization that is trying to establish an international worldwide smuggling ring. Your primary mission is to take on the GOON and wipe them out before they can carry out their diabolical scheme. The first thing you notice when starting up the game is that your movement is restricted and you can only walk left and right. This is similar to other 8-bit beat-em-ups at the time, but after playing the original arcade game, it is noticeable. The headbutt is also missing. This game also has the addition of unique end-of-level bosses, whether it be helicopters or just big burly brutes. A lot of levels are laid out very similar to the arcade game, but they include expanded areas along with various new enemies. As far as weapons go, you can still pick up your trusty but perhaps rusty machine gun and combat knife, but you can also pick up brass knuckles which will double your punching power, a bulletproof vest which will provide you temporary invulnerability, grenades, and extra life. These extra power-ups are usually found in the various rooms and huts scattered throughout the levels. An opening cinematic and brand new cutscenes have also been included to help pull you into the story. Despite the lack of two player simultaneous play, which is sorely missing, the game is still an excellent expanded title to enjoy on your faithful 8-bit NES. The arcade game was also included as part of SNK's 40th anniversary collection. An unofficial remake was released entitled, what else, POW Remake for Windows. This added a number of new features, bosses, weapons, as well as new missions and cutscenes. A little bit of blood and gore was also included which adds to the overall wartime experience. This is a fantastic update, so if you are a fan of the original, you should check it out. <laughs> this 
this was always a fun game to play and something about it really stood out to me back in the day. I'm not sure if it was the smooth animation, the fun gameplay, or just the entire package, but it was something I really enjoyed playing, especially in two-player mode. If you like this video, be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Also, if you would like to support me on Patreon, please click the link below. If you would like to contribute but not sign up for my Patreon, you can always click the donate button up above. Thanks everyone for watching.